Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. How's it going, everybody? This is Big Mike, and welcome to Big Mike's Movie Reviews. Today is Monday, November 27th, 2023. Yesterday on the 26th, I had myself a little triple feature Sunday. I started off with the 3D animated third part of the Trolls films called Trolls Band Together. Then I saw the Disney 3D animated new film, Wish, the musical. And this third and final one was the historical war drama called Napoleon, obviously based off of Napoleon Bonaparte. This film was directed by the great Ridley Scott, who is continuing to make these kind of biopic slash war slash drama slash action films. And I gotta say right now, wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> What's the plot of this movie? What's the point of explaining it? It's exactly what you think it is. It's about Napoleon and his rise and fall. It stars Academy Award winner Joaquin Phoenix playing Napoleon Bonaparte. This film also has Vanessa Kirby playing his wife, Josephine. This movie also has a few other players tossed into the mix, including Rupert Everett and the great Ian McNeese. So I will tell you guys right here and now, I was a little skeptical to see this film. Because, you know, I've been seeing so many movies that are long already. And this film has the same runtime as the current Hunger Games film that's out in theaters. This film is also 2 hours and 37 minutes. And, of course, there is no intermission. It's right on the cusp. But I will say, before I continue with the review, I was reading that Ridley Scott is planning on releasing his 4-hour-plus director's cut of this film on Apple TV+. He has gone on record to say, and I'm very happy to say as well, that this film was already pushing it. And he felt the audience shouldn't have to sit in the theater that, you know, that long because it does get to a point where it can feel like a slog. It can feel monotonous. It can feel like it's dragging. And he just wants to give people the core essentials. So bravo to you, Mr. Scott. Thank you for that. And, you know, it's amazing to think that this man, Mr. Ridley Scott, Sir Ridley Scott, forgive me, who's in his mid-80s, I believe, is still cranking these sorts of films out. This movie has such amazing precision when it comes to the blocking of the scenes and the way that he orchestrates and you know, puts the actors and extras together for these battle scenes. The majority of the film was shot in Malta. It was photographed by the great Darius Wolski. And a lot of the color in this film is very much similar to how his other more recent films look. It has, at times, beautiful amber. And at most part, it has that steely kind of washed out grayish white look with a hyper shutter rate, although mine's very smooth. And I will say this, if this film doesn't at least get nominated for its sound mix, something's really wrong. Because I'm going to tell you something right now, honey. I saw this in Dolby Cinema, as you should, by the way, because of its runtime. You at least get the reclining chairs. You do want to be comfortable for 157 minutes, don't you? Now, the first cannon that goes off, when it goes off and that first explosion hits, oh, honey, you're going to feel it. He pays very good attention to detail when it comes to the sound design. The sounds of those muskets shooting, the explosions, they ring true with strong reverberation and just really, really powerful, you know, just everything, the explosions, all of it. You will feel like you are in the middle of the crossfires. Now, one final thing, speaking about crossfire, you will see, unfortunately, some horses get killed in the crossfire during some of the battles. So be mindful of that. And parents, don't bring your fucking kids to this movie, please. Because when I went to go see this last night, there was a little six-year-old looking child, maybe even younger, who was running up and down the stairs, boom, 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 and running across the front of the theater backwards and forwards and having his parents walk him in and out of the theater. So, you know, 
this is not the movie to take your kids to go see. I know we're living in a new time now where kids don't have bedtimes or they can do whatever the fuck they feel like. But do not take little children to see a film that's, number one, got a lot of sex scenes in it, because it does, in detail, strong graphic violence, a very loud soundtrack, and most importantly, a 157-minute runtime. Kids have a tough enough time sitting through a 90-minute cartoon in theaters. What the fuck makes you think they're going to sit through a 2-hour and 37-minute film when you add the trailers, especially in Dolby Cinema, it evens out at a solid 3 hours. Don't be selfish. You know, I don't care if I sound like a Karen, if I sound like an elitist, if I sound like a Mia Audio. Just use some common sense, please. That's enough of my rant. So... Um, apart from all that, the performances in the film are pretty solid. I thought everybody did a good job across the board. Even though the film is 157 minutes long, it doesn't feel like it's dragging its feet at all. It feels very concise and very to the point. I was very pleased with what I saw. Would I watch the four-hour cut of this? Maybe. I'm not sure. Possibly. But... I hope it does get some recognition come Oscar season, especially for its technical aspects. They are really good. The scenes with Joaquin Phoenix and Vanessa Kirby together are very solid, as are the action scenes. This film does kind of have an A, B, and C approach to it, but I didn't mind that. You could feel the runtime, but you also really don't get bored by this film, and that's thanks to the great editing in this film. I was very pleased. The music score is also good. This was a good film all the way around, and it's interesting because its score is almost exactly equal all across the board. It has a, to my surprise, a 61% on Rotten Tomatoes from the critics, 62% on Rotten Tomatoes from the audience, and it has a 6.2% on IMDb. I don't know what all these six points ratings are, but I thought this film was a lot better than that. And speaking of grades, I'm going to go ahead and give mine right here and now. I'm going to go ahead and give Ridley Scott's Napoleon a very solid, very, very fair B+. This film was good, but it gets the plus on there because of its excellent sound mix, tight editing, and solid performances and entertainment value all together. This is why we go to the movies, people. If we want to be educated and entertained simultaneously, we can usually rely on Ridley Scott to give that to us. This film has a very similar feel and vibe to that film he did a few years back, called The Last Duel, and this movie more than makes up for that bomb he did a decade ago called The Counselor with Michael Fassbender and Cameron Diaz. This movie really washes that one away. But it's nice to see that we still have senior filmmakers like him still in the business after all these years, doing the best he can to provide us with solid entertainment and a good reason to go back to the movies. Mr. Scott, if you ever do see this like hell you ever will, you did good once again. Keep up the great work, sir. All right, you guys, that wraps up possibly all of my reviews for the month of November, year 2023. I may go later on this week. It's not confirmed, but I may go later this week to either see Saltburn or Dream Scenario. So look out for those. It's a possibility, but it's not a guarantee. I will try to see one of those two while I got the chance. You guys, take care. You be well. Show lots of love. Like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more reviews as always. And you already know I will see you at the movies. Bye now.